Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Music of the Week. Not really much to go over for this one, we have about five albums to go through, so let's just try and go through the five albums. We start in Seattle, Washington for Dragged Under and their second album, Upright Animals. These are a band that formed back in 2019, all the way back then in the good old times. And I really like these guys, I caught their debut, The World Is In Your Way, and that was in my top 30 of 2020. Very good chance that Upright Animals will be in my top uh, 30. I almost said top 20. Top 30 of 2022. Really loved it, giving it an A. Loved the uh, themes of it, like, again, retaining their sort of political sense, but also having the things I used to talk about, and thankfully having a bit more growth this time around, because that was kind of an issue on their debut. They did feel a bit by the numbers sometimes with their lyrics, but no, this time they're actually being a bit more pertinent with it, a bit more consistent with it as well. The performance is still great. Tony Capoce is a fantastic vocalist. He just always sounds like he's having so much fun. And I, ju I just love it. Just love the energy that the dude puts out. Ryan Fliff Bruce, solid guitarist. All band members are pretty solid as well. I think they got a new guitarist for this one as well. I don't remember the name right off the top of my head. But still, yeah, so, oh, yes. Yes, also fantastic production and uh, really good structuring as well, really well put together, just a good old-fashioned hardcore punk sound. I really love this one, so chances are that you will too. Next we go to Torrance, California for Joyce Manor and their sixth album, 40 Ounces to Fresno. Now, these are a band I've known about for a long time, they've been around since 2008, so you know, I found out about them like in the late 2010s, mid to late 2010s. And I know that they put out, even though they put out full albums, the albums are notoriously really short. I mean, this one is, how long is it? About 16 minutes and 40 seconds. Um, but still, I'm giving it a B plus. I really liked it for my first Joyce, like my first full Joyce Manor experience. I enjoyed quite a lot of what I heard from it. The theme, I like the theme of just like chilling with friends, you know, I mean, that is a really good theme to have with something like this is something like youth because they've been around for quite a while now. They were just talking about their lives on the California streets, just driving from gig to gig, getting drunk, getting wasted, and, well, okay, so, sort of like that. That's how I interpreted it. But, yeah, it was very fun of them to just, like, talk about how young they used to be and how things have changed for them. Uh, solid uh, musicianship as well. I think it's their first with the new drummer. I could be wrong about that. Usually the band has three members, but as you saw from the cover, which I faded in and out so effortlessly with my editing skills, there's only three on the cover. And it's a weird cover as well because you don't see any of their faces, but they're, they're public knowledge. People know who these people are. They have their full names on their... It's weird, right? It's, it's a bit weird, but still really well done for a short album. It's almost annoyingly catchy. Um, like a lot of the songs are just really, really pleasant to listen to. Production's quite good, too. Um, who did it for this one? Uh, Rob Schnapf. Okay. Um, not a name I'm terribly familiar with, but they did a great job. It's on Epitaph, though, and Epitaph is still one of, like, the top three record labels ever for alternative music. So, yeah, I really like this one. Um, probably a lot more than I thought it would. I was just expecting it to be, like, typical sort of indie hipster bollocks, but no, I heavily enjoyed this one. So... Yes, it, it's good. Next we go to Scranton, Pennsylvania for Motionless and White and their sixth album, well, I almost said third for some reason, their sixth album, Scoring the End of the World. Now these are a band I'm quite familiar with. I did a backtracking uh, season, I did a backtracking episode for them in this season, I think I did it like about a year ago, and I really like Motionless and White. I had, a, I had more of a soft spot for Disguise than most other people did, and um... You know what? No real soft spot for this one. I like it as much as everyone else does. I'm giving this one an A. Really loved the themes that they usually tackle, blended in so effortlessly with new stuff. Um, loved that they had more of an epic vibe to things as well. I, I always thought that was something that was kind of missing from them. Um, I like that they blended more industrial elements as well. Like the keyboard and synth work on this album especially is quite good, even though they don't technically have a keyboard or synth player anymore, and they haven't for a while. But the production works that in quite nicely. The riffs are still great for the... I think it's the first full album for a couple of the members as well. Um, yeah, yeah, okay. For bassist Justin Morrow, formerly from Most Nine Kills, and drummer Vinnie Morrow. Uh, spelled differently, even though they probably pronounce it the same in America. It's very, very strange. But yeah, Justin Morrow I'm a big fan of because I always liked his work in Most Nine Kills and he absolutely shows the fuck up. Yeah, and... Yeah, yeah. And uh, Chris Motionless, still a fantastic... Uh, modern day metalcore industry metal vocalist love his scream love like his his singing has come along quite nicely too he's got such a bit of vibrato to him as well yeah really enjoyed scoring the end of the world so go check it out when you can it's not gonna be the end of the world sorry
Also, the structuring was really good too, so I thought that I get that out of the way. It does a lot with all the time it's given, and it's given quite a lot of time, so yes. Next, we go to Toronto, Ontario, Canada for Red Handed Denial and their third album, I'd Rather Be Asleep. Now, this is a band I thought I'd be familiar with sooner, considering that I'm such a huge Lauren Babick fan, and. Okay, well, I mostly know from a work with, in Crazy 88 with Patty Walters, Tyson Dang, and Jared Alonji. So, you know, those are all people I quite like, too. And, yeah, I quite like this one, although it does get the lowest grade of the episode, I'm giving it a B. It's pretty good, progressive-style metalcore, but my main issue with the album is the length. It is not given a lot of time to go. You know, it needed, like, a couple more songs, or at least some of the songs on it to be a bit longer, because there's only about ten. And this needed a little bit more to it to fill it out a bit. It feels a bit, like, scrawny in its delivery, but that's a personal thing. However, everything else about it is still really great. Love the lyrical themes of mental health. That's a pretty prominent one. Lauren Baby is still a fantastic female vocalist. Her screaming is... It's come so, so far. And the last thing I listened to involving her was the uh, was Crazy 88's debut. And in that time between, Red Handed Denial put out an album, like, after the Crazy 88 one and before this one that I didn't listen to because I didn't know Red Handed, Red Handed Denial existed. And they've been around since 2008, so that one's on me. But still, I really enjoyed this one. Um, pretty good stuff on it. The performance is, again, really solid. I like the production as well. That does save a lot of it. I like the fact that they're on independent labels too, which probably means that they get to handle a lot of their own stuff. So I'm good with it. Just th all the right stuff that should work works really well. And finally, we go to Worcester, Massachusetts for Silent Drive and their second album, Fairhaven. Um, these are a post-hardcore group. Uh, they formed way the hell back in 2003. So, uh, yeah, you heard that right. So, they formed back in 2003, so they've been around for almost two decades. They put out their demo debut in 2003, their full-length debut in 2004, and I double-triple-checked all the sources I could find, right? They didn't break up. They didn't go on hiatus. They probably toured to promote their debut album. Uh, there was no EPs, no live stuff, no video compilations, nothing. And then 18 years after that falling debut, they dropped this one. I... I I would like to know exactly how this came to be, right? I, I could find no evidence of them breaking up or anything, and it's, it's weird. I still really like the album, though. Um, giving it a B plus. Again, like I said, excuse my hair there. Um, these are a band from, like, the mid-2000s era of post hardcore where it was a lot more jumpy and technical, and they bring that style to, like, the 2020s quite well. I love how the riffs felt and how they were pulled off. The drum work was quite nice. The vocals from lead singer Zach Jordan, almost said Johnson, Zach Jordan, a very charismatic vocalist, very emotive vocalist as well. I really like that. Structuring is quite good. Nice heavy pacing that consistently mixes it up. Yeah, I think a B plus grade is a really solid one for it. It does suffer a little bit from, sometimes it can take a bit of getting used to, um, but you know what, it's still a really great album, and hopefully I won't have to wait until I'm 50 to listen to their next one, because, good fucking lord, 18 years and nothing- Oh my- I'm- my brain's more blown by that than anything, but yes, you should still listen to the album, but still, 18 years. Christ. And that'll about do it for this one, uh, next thing I'll see you for will be tomorrow night, Friday, Friday night, over the top. My Royal Rumble is going to be fucking amazing. Um, also, because I usually forget about doing these, my most recommended. Pretty much all of them. I know I say that each time. Um, but my most most recommended is, uh, would be Drag Dunder's new album and Motion Loser Wise's new album as well. But I would recommend giving all of these a spin at least once. You might find some fun, uh, fun stuff and you might even like some of it more than I did. So, you know, that's completely open to interpretation. Um, yeah, next thing I'll see you for, I uh, already said it, tomorrow, tomorrow night, tomorrow Friday, tomorrow Friday night for my uh, stream, my over the top stream. It's gonna be fucking cool. That's about it. All I can really promote as always. Thank you for watching. You're awesome. Bye-bye.